Welcome to My First Bow. In this channel, we will show you step by step how we turn our 40 foot vintage steel yacht into a full time liverboard. Welcome back to another episode. Today we have two big jobs to cover, so let's dive into it right away. We'll start here in the engine room by removing the rest of this old seacock. This used to be connected to one of the bilge pumps. We start by cutting a bigger circle into the noise reducing foam. Then we unscrew the fitting and remove it. We are going to make use of this hole for the project at hand, but first we are gonna have to make it a little bigger. For that I first need to remove the paint surrounding the outside of the hole. Now it's down to the bare steel on the outside and we do the same on the inside. Next I trace a circle at the appropriate size and then it's time to take out our plasma cutter again. Let's get everything in position and start cutting. For this of course we're gonna need our diesel generator and our air compressor. We try to turn off the air compressor whenever we can so that the plasma cutter can make use of all the available electricity. But even so, we ran into similar difficulties as before, namely that we can run the plasma cutter only at half its power. Combine this with our amateur skill level and you'll end up with very ugly and inaccurate cuts, as you will see in a moment. Here's a look at the current that the plasma cutter is pulling. And even so it didn't work very well, eventually it did work and we managed to enlarge the hole. All that's left to do now is to clean up the sharp edges a little. Et voila, the hole is now bigger. Alright, now let me tell you what we are actually doing here. With these components here, we are attempting to make a fitting for the exhaust pipe of our diesel generator, so that we can install it into the engine room. More specifically, we want to make a double walled pipe, such as you would find for a diesel heater for example. First I'm gonna build a little workstation here on the platform, where we are currently docking. The plan is to cut two holes into this 3mm sheet metal. And I assure you, it will all make sense in a moment. But first let me show you how I struggle in the same way as my friend earlier, trying to make straight cuts with the plasma cutter. If you never used a plasma cutter before, you should know that it's very much different than what you would expect. While it does cut through this 3mm steel like a hot knife through butter, there is a certain stickiness to it, for lack of a better word, which makes it very difficult in fact to make accurate cuts. In addition to that I could hardly see where the marks were, but that's mainly caused by using the wrong equipment for marking and maybe a welding shield that's too dark. And I invite all the welding experts following this channel to maybe give us some tips on which equipment to use specifically for plasma cutting and how to make it better. Alright, for now let's finish this up and see what we got. Here are our two holes and I warned you, they are not too pretty. Now let's draw the outer lines so that we can cut out two discs. Thank you. 
Alright, now we have those. Let's clean them up a little. At first I tried to clean up the inner holes by hand, but that got old very quickly so I resorted back to the angle grinder. And the goal of course is to get that 60mm pipe to fit through. And there you have it. Later on, I repeated the same process for the second disc. Alright, now let's work on this 90 degree angle pipe. First we cut it a little shorter on one end. Clean the sharp edges. Next we cut off the muffler to its final length. Clean up the sharp edges. Next we cut some grooves into the pipe so that we can reduce its diameter. Now we can attach it to our 90 degree angle pipe with an exhaust clamp. For now of course just to test it as we are not finished yet. Now let's cut off the upper part of this pipe adapter because we only need the 60mm side. To make our double walled pipe. Now let's get back to our 90 degree angle pipe where we trim the other end but this time with a slight angle to it so that it creates this little overhang. Now we can weld the 60mm pipe to our 90 degree angle pipe. And there you have it. Now we are halfway there. Next we're gonna drill some holes into our discs and we have to make sure the holes align perfectly between the two discs. Next we're gonna weld one of the discs to the outer pipe, make sure everything is straight and then weld it together. Now let's clean this up and have a look at what we got. And there you have it. Now I could certainly spend another hour or so to get a better finish on this, but we are short on time, plus it was another weekend, so I didn't want to push my luck too hard in terms of complaints for noise from the neighbors. Moving on, now we have to drill the same holes into the hull. Now let's install the new piece for the first time, very carefully, definitely try not to drop it into the water. So while I'm putting the screws in from one side, my friend is in the engine room tightening them from the other side. And so the part fits perfectly. Later on we added some rubber gaskets between the hull and the two discs to dampen the vibrations a little. Now it's time to get down the diesel generator, which we will show you in the next episode. For now, let's have a look at what we did with this batch of pine wood. We use it for the paneling of the walls here in the forward cabin. Here we have some flat profiles welded to the walls where we can screw those small timbers too. We have the same flat profiles in those overhanging areas here. Now then, let's get started with this wall. And if you wonder why I got such short timbers, well, it's the only ones I could find in that size. And as you can see, they have the exact same width as the existing flat profiles. 
So let's screw those in place using the existing holes. Right now that those are in place, you can see how this will facilitate the paneling of the walls. Now we have some points of attachment where we can screw the future panels too. On the other side of the door, of course, the flat profile did not have any screw holes. So let's go ahead and drill six holes into this 4mm thick steel. Right now we have the holes and so we can attach more timbers. And there you go. Unfortunately, that's all the timbers we can attach to this wall, simply because there aren't any further ways to attach more timbers. But let's worry about that when we come to the actual paneling. For now, let's take care of these overhanging areas here. We have the same sized flat profiles, so we can use the same timbers. And I have to cut the wood at some angle on both sides to allow for a better fit. So let's first cut all the wood we need. Next, let's screw them in place. These are the ones on the port side. Next, let's do the ones on the starboard side. Now we can finalize the insulation works with Armaflex. Provided by our sponsor, Armacell. Find a link in the description of this video. For the walls we are using the 19mm Armaflex, as opposed to the 32mm Armaflex which we've used so far. Other than the thickness, there is no difference between the two materials. Although I have to say that the 19mm material is a little easier to handle. So let's get that installed on the walls. And I'm gonna go a bit faster here because we've covered Armaflex in several previous episodes, so go check that out if you're interested in it. And then there's the area here behind the ladder. I decided to make a simple frame with two pieces of timber, which will serve as support for the ladder. And it's all about precision here. And there you have it. The first timber is in place. Now all that we have to do is align the second one and punch it in. To secure the wood in place, I'm adding four screws, screwed in in a 45 degree angle. This is now done and we can add the insulation in between. Now let's add some armor flex to the remaining areas. 
such as here around that tube for the diesel heater. And then of course those overhanging areas. Here we put in the 32mm Armaflex. And there you have it. Insulation works in the forward cabin plus making a base for the future paneling are about done. And with this my friends, I'm signing off, thank you all for watching and see you again in the next video.